Welcome to Stellar Insights, where we uh, dive deep into a critical aspect of the Apollo 11 mission that doesn't always get the attention it deserves. The heat shield. The heat shield. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of the moon landing itself, but without this incredible piece of engineering, there wouldn't have been a safe return for those astronauts. Yeah. It's like imagining a superhero's cape. But instead of deflecting bullets, it's deflecting thousands of degrees of heat generated during re-entry. That's a, a great analogy because we are talking about that command module hitting the Earth's atmosphere at roughly 25,000 miles per hour. Wow. And the friction alone at those speeds is going to create temperatures that would melt most metals. We're talking about around 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So what exactly was this heat shield made of? that allowed it to withstand such extreme temperatures? Well, the primary material was something called Avcoat 502639J, which is a specially formulated phenolic epoxy resin. Um, but what's really fascinating is it wasn't just a single layer of this material. The heat shield was a complex system with multiple layers, each playing a vital role in protecting the astronauts inside. Okay, so walk me through these layers. What exactly were we dealing with here? So think of it like a high-tech onion on the outside, you had the thermal control coating. Okay. This was made up of captain tape, aluminum, and oxidized silicon monoxide. And then came the real workhorse of the heat shield, the Avcoat 502639G. The Avcoat. It was responsible for the bulk of that heat protection. But there was more, right? This onion had a few more layers to it. Indeed. Supporting that Avcoat layer was a fiberglass honeycomb shell, okay. followed by a brazed steel honeycomb substructure, and then finally a layer of low-density fibrous insulation that's called TG15000, all meticulously engineered to work together. So this wasn't some slapdash job, clearly. Uh -huh. A lot of thought went into ensuring the safety of the crew. Absolutely. And all those layers added up in terms of weight, you know? Yeah. The entire heat shield weighed in at around 3,000 pounds. It's remarkable how they balanced the need for protection with the limitations of weight for a successful launch. Yeah, absolutely. So we had these layers, but how did they actually work to dissipate that incredible heat? Right. You mentioned the Avcoat was the key player, but how so? Right. That's where the principle of ablation comes in. Okay. Essentially, during re-entry, the Avcoat would char and melt away, carrying that intense heat with it. So think of it as a sacrificial layer burning up to protect what's underneath. It's almost counterintuitive, right? Mm -hmm. You would think you want something that resists heat, not melts away. You would. You would. But in this case, controlled disintegration is the key to success. Wow. And that's where the honeycomb structure of the underlying layers played such a crucial role. How so? Was it just about reducing weight? Weight was definitely a factor, but the honeycomb structure was crucial for evenly distributing that heat across the shield. So even if a small section was compromised during re-entry, the design helped prevent a total failure of the heat shield. So they created this honeycomb structure and then filled it with the Avcoat. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine that was an easy process. It was an incredibly meticulous process. Um, they first formed the honeycomb from fiberglass, then painstakingly filled each cell with that Avcoat resin. After that, the whole structure was bonded to the command module's steel shell using a combination of vacuum bagging and thermal curing. Wow. Sounds like a delicate operation with a little room for error. Precisely. Quality control was paramount. Every step was rigorously inspected. Right. They used ultrasonic testing and x-rays to ensure that that honeycomb was perfectly bonded and free of any defects because any flaw could have had catastrophic consequences. It makes you appreciate the level of precision and craftsmanship involved in something that seems at first glance like a simple concept. Absolutely. But, you know, that wasn't actually their first idea. It wasn't. Initially, the engineers considered a different approach using ablative tiles cemented directly to the spacecraft. Oh, interesting. So why the change? What made the honeycomb structure a better choice? They discovered that with those individual tiles, the risk of them coming loose during launch or re-entry was just too high. Oh, okay. And filling those honeycomb cells with the Avcoat material, while complex, proved to be a more reliable manufacturing challenge compared to, you know, perfectly adhering numerous tiles. Well, the honeycomb offered a sort of built-in redundancy. Exactly. Even if a small area of the honeycomb was damaged, the overall integrity of the heat shield would remain intact. Right. It speaks to the brilliance of the engineering team's ability to adapt and find the best solution, even if it meant rethinking their initial approach. That leads to a question I had. Before the intense heat of re-entry, 
Wasn't there another heat challenge during launch itself? You're referring to the heat generated during liftoff? Yeah. Right. To protect the command module from those initial high temperatures, they used what was called a boost protective cover. Okay. What kind of temperatures are we talking about here? The boost phase could reach temperatures of up to 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. So even before leaving the Earth's atmosphere, the Apollo spacecraft needed protection from intense heat. It did. What was this boost cover made of? It was a robust structure primarily composed of fiberglass and cork. Um, interestingly, it also had a white reflective layer to help deflect some of that heat radiating from the Saturn V rocket. It seems a bit counterintuitive to add even more weight to something that needs to be as light as possible to escape Earth's gravity. Uh -huh. How much did this boost cover weigh? It added a significant 700 pounds, but it was essential for protecting the command module during the most intense phase of the launch. And, uh, you know, the thickness varied depending on its location, ranging from about three tenths of an inch to almost an inch at its thickest point. So you've got this heavy boost cover for launch, then the ablative heat shield for re-entry. The Apollo 11 spacecraft went through some serious temperature extremes to say the least. And don't forget the frigid temperatures of space, which can plunge as low as Degonus 280 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. You know, the spacecraft and its systems were designed to withstand a truly mind-boggling range of temperatures. Which brings to mind another critical, often overlooked system, the environmental control subsystem. Absolutely essential. This system was responsible for maintaining a safe and functional temperature inside that command module, not just for the astronauts, but also for all the sensitive equipment on board. Yeah. You know, it was like a high stakes thermostat, ensuring everything functioned correctly throughout the mission. That's incredible. But how do they even know what temperatures to prepare for, especially during re entry? It's not like they could just test it out beforehand. Right. That's where Project FIRE comes in. Project FIRE. Which stands for Flight Investigation Re-Entry Environment. Tell me more about that. It was a series of experiments and tests designed to gather real-world data on the conditions a spacecraft would face during re-entry. They used wind tunnel experiments and, most importantly, actual flight tests using Atlas rockets. Wow. To gather information on heating rates, material performance, and the overall dynamics of atmospheric reentry. So they didn't just rely on theoretical calculations. They actually put hardware through the paces to validate their design. Exactly. Project FIRE provided invaluable data that helped refine the heat shield and ensure the safety of the Apollo missions. We often think about the astronauts and the incredible feats they accomplished. But it's important to remember all the people working behind the scenes, the engineers, the scientists, the technicians, who made these missions possible. Absolutely. Speaking of, who were the manufacturers behind this technological marvel? The heat shield panels themselves were produced by Aronka Manufacturing Co. And the application of the ablative coating, which was really the heart of the heat shield's protection, who handled that? That crucial task fell to Avco Corp. They not only developed the ablative coating, but also perfected the techniques for applying it to that honeycomb structure. It's amazing to think about all the different companies and individuals who contributed their expertise to create this one vital component, this heat shield. The composition, the layering, the ablative process, the honeycomb structure, the rigorous testing, and the dedicated teams at Aronka and Avco who brought it all together, truly remarkable. What stands out to you most about this heat shield design? Honestly, it's the sheer ingenuity of the ablative process itself. This concept of a material sacrificing itself to protect something else is incredibly elegant and powerful. And of course, the meticulous craftsmanship and attention to detail that went into every stage of the heat shield's development. It's a testament to human ingenuity and the ability to overcome seemingly insurmountable challenges. The Apollo 11 heat shield was certainly a uh, remarkable achievement in ensuring the safe return of the astronauts from their lunar voyage. But looking forward, how might those innovations inform our approach to future space exploration challenges? It's a good question to consider. Space exploration is all about pushing boundaries. And uh, with missions to Mars and beyond on the horizon, we're going to need even more advanced heat shield technologies. Thinking about a Mars mission specifically brings a unique set of challenges. The Martian atmosphere, it's significantly thinner than Earth's. Right. So a spacecraft would enter at a much higher velocity, leading to even greater heating than during Apollo reentry. So the Avcoat material, while revolutionary for its time, 
might not be suitable for the intense conditions of a Mars re-entry. It's not just about the material itself. The entire heat shield system needs to be reimagined. The Apollo heat shield, you know, it was designed for a single use. Right. For longer duration missions, especially those involving a return trip, we need to start thinking about reusable heat shield systems. Reusable heat shields. That sounds incredibly complex. The complexity is undeniable. Yeah. But there is promising research underway. Okay. One concept involves... Um, Inflatable heat shields? Inflatable. Imagine a heat shield packed compactly for launch and then inflated upon reaching its destination. That would be revolutionary in terms of payload efficiency. But how could an inflatable heat shield withstand the extreme heat of atmospheric entry? Well, that's where advancements in materials science come in. Researchers are exploring these new types of high temperature fabrics and uh, inflatable structures capable of withstanding those harsh conditions. Okay. Some designs even incorporate a layer of that ablative material on that inflatable structure, you know, merging the advantages of both technologies. A hybrid approach, combining the efficiency of inflatable technology with the proven thermal protection of ablative material. Exactly. It's an intriguing concept. There are other exciting developments as well, such as the use of carbon-based composite materials. These materials offer incredible strength and heat resistance, making them prime candidates for future heat shields. Carbon composites are already widely used in aerospace. Applying that technology to heat shields seems like a natural progression. Absolutely. And, and we can't overlook those advancements in computational modeling and simulation. We can now simulate re-entry scenarios with incredible accuracy. Oh, wow. You know, this allows us to optimize those heat shield designs before even building a physical prototype. So unlike the early days of space exploration, we're not solely reliant on trial and error. We're using the power of computing to refine and improve designs before they ever leave the ground. And those simulations are crucial for testing new materials and concepts, you know, like those inflatable heat shields, in a virtual environment. Right. This significantly reduces the reliance on those costly and time-consuming physical tests. It seems the future of heat shield technology is about finding the right balance between innovation and reliability. We need to push those boundaries of materials science and engineering while always prioritizing safety. Which brings us back to the legacy of the Apollo program. Those missions were a testament to human ingenuity, but also a stark reminder of the inherent risks of space exploration. The Apollo 1 fire, a tragic accident that resulted in the loss of three astronauts, underscored that critical importance of stringent safety protocols and meticulous attention to detail. It's a lesson we must carry forward as we venture further into space. It emphasizes that innovation in space exploration isn't solely about developing new technologies. Right. It's about cultivating a culture of safety and accountability, ensuring that every mission is planned and executed with the utmost care and precision. Pushing those boundaries of what's possible requires acknowledging that potential human cost of failure. Looking ahead, what are some key areas of focus for future heat shield research and development? There are several critical areas to concentrate on. We must continue to advance material science, you know, exploring new materials like those carbon composites and high temperature fabrics that can withstand those extreme conditions of atmospheric entry. That will require close collaboration between aerospace engineers and material scientists, pushing the limits of current capabilities. Absolutely. Collaboration is key. Additionally, we need to refine the design and testing of reusable heat shield systems particularly those incorporating those inflatable technologies. Right. This is essential for making those longer duration missions, like a round trip to Mars, more feasible. And it's not just about the materials and structures themselves. We also need to develop sophisticated control systems for managing these complex heat shields. Right. Especially for those that are inflatable or have moving parts. That's a crucial aspect. And, and let's not forget the importance of computational modeling and simulation. We need to continuously improve our ability to predict and analyze heat shield performance in those various reentry scenarios. That will help us identify potential issues early on in the design process and make necessary adjustments before building a physical prototype, right. saving valuable time and resources. We're leveraging that power of computing to expedite innovation while mitigating risks. The future of heat shield technology appears to be just as exciting and challenging as the missions it will enable. And just as vital to the success of those missions, the heat shield is the unsung hero of space exploration, ensuring that safe return of those who venture beyond our planet. As we set our sights on missions to Mars and beyond, 
The innovation stemming from those challenges of protecting spacecraft from that intense heat of atmospheric entry will undoubtedly shape the future of human exploration. What's particularly intriguing is the potential for these technologies to have applications beyond space exploration. The materials and techniques developed for heat shields could be utilized in other extreme environments here on Earth. Are you thinking of applications like fire protection, industrial processes involving high temperatures, or even protecting sensitive equipment in harsh conditions? Exactly. The innovations driven by that need to protect spacecraft from that searing heat of reentry could have far-reaching implications, leading to advancements in material science and engineering that benefit humanity in countless ways. Space exploration is not solely about venturing into the unknown. Yeah. It's about expanding our knowledge and capabilities in ways that can have a profound impact on life here on Earth. You know, it's fascinating how that pursuit of solutions in this, uh, you know, demanding realm of space exploration often leads to innovations that benefit us uh, in, you know, various other fields. Right. The quest for those, uh, you know, lighter, stronger, and more heat-resistant materials that we need for spacecraft has had a remarkable ripple effect on industries right here on Earth. It's like this chain reaction of technological advancement, where yeah. you solve one problem in this highly specialized field like space exploration, and then the solutions you develop end up having these uh, unexpected applications in everyday life. A prime example is the development of memory foam. Oh, yeah. Initially created by NASA to enhance the safety and comfort of aircraft seats. Right. And now it's found in a wide array of products. Oh, yeah. Mattresses, pillows, shoes. Exactly. From mattresses and pillows to shoes and car seats. And let's not forget those incredible scratch-resistant lenses. Oh, right. Another byproduct of NASA research. Yeah. They were originally designed to protect those astronaut helmets from debris. Right. Now they're a common feature in eyeglasses and sunglasses worldwide. All over the place. These advancements really demonstrate the power of investing in fundamental research and just pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Yeah. The implications of such breakthroughs often extend far beyond their initial intended purpose. As we continue to explore the cosmos and set our sights on those ambitious destinations like Mars and beyond, we can anticipate even more groundbreaking innovations in heat shield technology. Absolute. Innovations that will not only enable those missions, but also have the potential to revolutionize industries and improve lives right here on Earth. It's important to recognize that space exploration isn't just about tangible technological advancements. Yeah. It also inspires a sense of wonder and possibility, reminding us of those incredible things that we can achieve when we set our minds to it. It encourages us to think beyond limitations. Yeah to envision those new solutions, and uh, to embrace the unknown with a spirit of curiosity and determination. Perhaps that's the most enduring legacy of missions like Apollo 11. I think so. They demonstrated that the human spirit of exploration, fueled by curiosity and ingenuity, is as boundless as the universe itself. So, to our listeners, as you navigate those challenges and seek solutions in your own lives, remember that Apollo 11 heat shield yeah. Remember the ingenuity and that meticulous craftsmanship that went into protecting those astronauts as they returned to Earth from the moon. Absolutely. Let it serve as a reminder that we're capable of extraordinary achievements when we dare to push those boundaries of what's possible. As we look to the future, to those challenges and opportunities that lie ahead, let's embrace that spirit of exploration and innovation, knowing that the journey itself is just as important as the destination. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the Apollo 11 heat shield. It's been a fascinating exploration of history, engineering, and those boundless possibilities of human ingenuity. We look forward to sharing more captivating insights with you on our next episode of Stellar Insights. Thanks for joining us for today's discussion. We hope you enjoyed diving into the topic as much as we did. If you found it interesting, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss future episodes. Let's keep exploring learning, and sharing great conversations together. Until next time, take care and stay curious.